Welcome to the Propreneur Podcast, where we help practice owners become better entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Dino Watt. And welcome once again, everybody, to the Propreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Dino Watt. Excited again to share with you another episode where we can help you be more proactive, productive, and profitable in all areas of your life. And this is what I'm excited about because if you've listened to this show for any amount of time, there have been oftentimes where I've talked about with our guests or just the challenge in general of hiring people. And if there was a company out there that could be more specific and specialized to our industry or smaller industries, as opposed to your big, you know, monsters.com and ziprecruiter.com, that they could actually find, uh, I think, a really great niche in our industry if somebody would do that. And lo and behold, a buddy of mine a few months ago reached out and said, hey, I think I'm working for a company who does kind of what you're thinking. And I got to be able to talk with the company and speak with Caleb, who we're going to be talking with today. And now I'm, I'm an advocate of them. I tell my doctors about it. I tell friends about it because it is exactly what we, I was talking about would be great to have for our industry and especially in the times that we're in today. So today we're going to talk to Caleb Larkin from Applicant Pro. And he's going to tell us all about how he can help you find the right people, the right fit people for your office and how to make it a lot easier for you than what you've probably been doing up to now. So get ready for a great episode, everybody. I'm excited to share with you. Caleb, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, mm -hmm. Caleb, one thing we do in our show is we always start with our guest story. So we'd love to hear your story of how you got started in this business and in this industry and how you built this company and uh, why, like, why are you doing this? Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> my background actually has nothing to do with hiring. When I stop, started my life, I thought I was going to go into journalism. <laughs> so oh. I have a degree in journalism um, and I did a little bit of reporting for a while um, in Utah for the Tribune and for the Standard Examiner and eventually got onto a software company, Applicant Pro. And they were kind of like a, um, a jump a springboard for me. And I thought, I'll, I'll start here and I'll go into some other things. But I got involved in specifically in helping companies hire and with a need that is not commonly met, right? Especially today yeah. and have since stayed. So I've been with Applicant Pro for coming up on 10 years. Wow. Um, and I started in many different uh, jobs. I started in support. So just answering phones and chats for clients and, and applicants. And then I moved into some more like beta testing and product development for a while. And I am currently at my longest role here, which is a hiring consultant. Uh, and so I've been the team lead over the hiring consultant team for about uh, four years now. So. Well, it's fascinating that you've been doing this for 10 years because you look like you're 22. So. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you on, why, all those who are watching on YouTube, you know what I'm talking about. So that's that's great. I'm a little older than 22. I'm just about turning 31. But yeah, I have started here a long time. It's been my longest running job for sure. <laughs> oh, that's one, great. It's pretty small. So <laughs> well, very cool. Well, I'm glad that uh, it's been something that you found a passion in as well. Tell us a little bit about the background of Applicant Pro and how they got started and doing what they do. Yeah, so our CEO, Ryan Kohler, um, he is someone that started off um, in accounting a little bit and then went over into HR. And when he was in HR, he realized that, that, that there wasn't really a good way for tracking candidates very well. So he wanted to develop a way that was focused on small businesses, that you didn't have to pay a fortune, and really manage the process of hiring candidates better, right? So iApplicants was born, um, and that was in 2005, I believe. Um, and since then, we rebranded in 2007 to Applicant Pro. Um, I came along in about 2012, 13, and uh, that's when I started to focus in on how we could help clients hire better. And especially, we've made some major changes um, with the start of the pandemic. We noticed that our clients weren't getting the results that they needed before, right? Most of the time they could post jobs, just whatever they wanted. There's a lot of power in the employer, right? A lot of people that just needed jobs and the power was there and therefore they could post whatever they wanted just on general job boards and they'd get tons of candidates and they'd get good quality candidates and they'd be able to sort through and hire them. 
right around, it was actually a little bit before the pandemic, um, Ryan and a few others at our organization, including myself, had a conversation about how we could make a more consultative approach to helping our clients hire. We saw that they were not being very successful in just the idea of posting a job and going out on major job boards and getting candidates that came in. So instead we said, okay, well, let's see if we can change a strategy. And so since then we've been able to do more of a consultative approach. And that's been our focus where we, instead of just providing a software, we'd actually provide a hiring expert that is able to help oh, nice. with your strategy of hiring, right? So that's why it's really different. Um, that's when we went into more marketing strategies and using like, hey, you got to sell people on your job. You got to write better content in your job ad. You've got to be able to market it in the right places. You've got to be able to sort through candidates effectively, right? And that's all the, the things that are hiring professionals. Which about. is one of the things I really love about what you guys do. I mean, I've been preaching to my clients for years. Listen, you got to have better copy on that ad, right? You can't just say we're looking for a front desk coordinator who has five years experience and can know how to, you know, use a scheduler and then word or whatever, right? You need to sexy that sucker up. Yeah. And um, also you got to be able to think about how are we going to compete against the bigger companies in the area, especially when you're talking about these smaller companies that can't offer the huge benefit packages that, you know, a, a Google or an Adobe or whatever can, even in every city, every major city, there's some large corporation that can offer way better packages than you can. And so I talk about that often. So I am, I'm thrilled that you guys have the coaches there to help walk them through, to help them see, this is probably why you're not being seen as much or uh, uh, clicked on as much. And, and that's super valuable. What has been your experience with that since you guys have implemented that? How have your clients reacted to that? Yeah, so we we do mostly work with small clients. So that's our goal. Um, yeah. Most of the vast majority of my clients are under 50 employees, right? Um, so small businesses that we work with and we're trying to give them their competitive advantage. Right? Yes. Right? What, just like you talked about, the biggest thing that we see right now is you get small businesses coming in here trying to hire and they're becoming a commodity, right? They're posting their job as the same as their big competitors do. And they don't have the same package options. They don't have the same price points uh, or the same salaries that they can offer. And therefore they're now, anybody that looks at it is like, well, obviously I'd apply to this other job that offers me a lot more, yep. right? Um, and now what we're trying to say is, okay, so let's think about what employees really want, right? They, it's not always just salary. Right. Salary right. is definitely an important part, right? Don't get me yeah. wrong. Salary is important. Sure. Everybody works for salary, but that is not even the number one or two reasons why people do their job. Yep. Number one is work environment and who they're working with and what they're doing and getting satisfaction out of their job. Uh, number two is flexibility, right? Whether that's flexibility in being able to work where you want, when you want, or even flexibility in pay options instead of doing hourly, you pay per project, pay, give bonus options, all that kind of stuff. Third is where salary and benefits packages come in. So, but employers think about it the other way, right? They flip it over and they say, that's the most important. And so that's been our biggest change with our clients is we've seen as we write their ads for them and focus in on, hey, what, what are your selling points on your job and your offering? Not what are your competitors selling points? You don't right. want to offer that, right? Or you don't want to compete with them when they have bet those better selling points. You don't want to be a me too. Us too. Yeah. We have that too. Us too. Yeah, yeah, we have that too. Or, or like we talk about it as like a commodity. Anytime you're buying gas or milk and the only differentiator is price, then you're going to go with the lowest one. If yep. your same job ad looks the exact same as somebody else, but you don't pay the same, that's going to be the difference, yep. right? And so putting more advertising dollars behind or anything like that, if it's the same ad, it's still going to be buried by the people that are offering something better. Right. Well, so, I totally agree with that. I think it's one of those so important things for people to understand. And, and yet too many people put too little thought into that, or they're just not, um, it's not their expertise, right? They're not creative that way. So mm -hmm. you guys come along and help them do that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Right. So what we've seen so far with our clients is we're seeing about three to five times the applicant traffic of what, and they're spending about, half the amount because they used to be spending wow. so much on indeed sponsorships and things like that 
Um, those definitely work, right? You get more applicants from Indeed sponsorships, but you got to have the right content first, right? Yep. Otherwise, you're going to get more applicants that are not really the best fits, right? We yep. want to sell to the right candidate and get the right candidate the right job. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how has this last year with like, uh, what they call it, the new resignation or the great resignation, how has that affected your business? How have you guys been able to kind of cultivate the clients uh, that the doctors want or the, the small businesses want, I should say? How mm -hmm. have you guys been able to work inside that? Yeah, so that's been something our, our business has definitely grown significantly um, with the pandemic, right? We've seen a huge uptick in number of clients and the need for hiring has just gone up, right? People now, they're feeling that pain. They used to kind of slightly feel it and it was something that they'd, you know, thought about, but they could get by. Now it's like, I can't get by, right? right. So they're coming to us. We're seeing a lot more um, small businesses, especially say, hey, we, we're struggling. We can't hire. What can we do? Um, and so during that time, we've seen the increase of people needing us, right, and coming to our expertise, but we've also seen um, a huge struggle for people to hire in general, right? And so with that, we still are, you know, it's, it's definitely not magic, right? We still have to compete with um, bigger organizations that are offering better salaries, but with the competitive advantage and marketing the jobs better, we are seeing um, a lot more people hire the right fits and being very satisfied with, hey, we we're set with where we got in our employment now, right? So it's been interesting to see during the pandemic to see how much it is affected with, we've seen about five times the amount of retirements, early retirements. We did about the same amount of retirement wow. we normally do in one year. We do we did five years, right? Wow. Uh, um, and so five times the amount, we got a lot less and we certainly didn't hire those. We had a lot of people leaving certain industries, mm -hmm. right? So we have labor industries and in-person industries were the hardest, right? Because they were the hardest hit. So yeah. there's so many options to do virtual industries yep. or work on your own, whether that was restaurant workers that went, decided to work for Uber, right? Because now I can work in my car and yep. go out. Or if it was, you know, people in reception offices that went to work for software companies, right? Yeah. So we saw a huge, it was definitely, even though there was a huge mass reg resignation, there was industries that bounced back and came way up in their amount of employees, right? And those were mostly industries that were not in person, face to face, right? Yeah, I've, it's very interesting because I've been having this conversation with a couple of my clients lately about, I was watching an interview with um, uh, Mr. Wonderful whatever his name is oh, on, uh, on Shark Tank, Kevin Leary. Yeah. And he was talking about this resignation, right? And how even in his business across the board, they're saying, wow, we can actually have our team members work at home, be more productive and us not have to have that office space. Great. That brings down our overhead. And I remember thinking, well, that's awesome in some industries, like in the ortho industry and in the dental industry you still need people there to actually put braces on people's teeth, right? For now, who knows? Some ATM will do it later on in 3D printing, whatever. But I have though gone through and kind of looked at different parts of the office and went, oh, you know what? You can have a, a financial coordinator, a scheduling coordinator, a marketing director, even a treatment coordinator. You can have that person virtual if you set it up correctly. And I'm actually seeing a couple of doctors. I've had some conversations with a couple of doctors who are doing exactly that, who are like, the more I can outsource from my business, the better, because it brings down my overhead. I don't have to worry about a whole bunch of benefits packages or insurance inside my office. I can have a smaller footprint. So there's definitely a move towards that. Uh, you guys deal primarily on the back end with the doctors, right? You're not doing anything to kind of attract uh, people to apply or am I wrong? No. So we, yeah, great question. So what our services do is we would write the job ad, right? We do the marketing and, and we do, we do help people apply in some places, right. And depending on the industry, uh, most of the time, what we're trying to do is take away barriers from applying, right? Mm. So the last thing that you want is a doctor that's qualified coming in and being like, Hey, I'm now looking for a better opportunity. And they start to the application process 
And they're like, man, this is forever long. It doesn't work on my phone. It's nothing's yeah. out of populating. I'm going to, okay, you know what? Never mind. This office is not for me because I want someone that's going to be innovative. The way you treat your, your employees, which start, it starts at the point of application, right? Makes a big difference on retention and their productivity. That's and a great so, point. Yeah. Most companies think about, oh, well, I only need to really consider and I'm treating an employee well at the point of I hire them, right? No, if you're not treating your applicants well, it reflects on the way that you would treat your employees. And there is an impression of that. Well, and you're showing that an applicant, right? That like how you have this all set up is a reflection of your culture inside of your office. And as you said, you know, the number one thing that people are looking for is the work environment, right? And so if they're already thinking, wow, you're trying, you're, you're making this way harder than it needs to be. If you don't care that much about making it easy for me to say yes, you are at least apply to you, then mm -hmm. I wonder what it's going to be like working for you. It's a yep. really great point. Never thought about that before. Yeah, absolutely. So it, def it definitely affects the, the mentality. And again, a lot of, we hear this excuse from em employers all the time. Well, if they're not willing to do this and they're too lazy, they're not going to work. Right. Anyway, right, right? right. And I'm like, well, maybe, right. You could get that. That's potential there. And you do have some lazy candidates out there. So you will have the sure. worst drop off, but you're also going to have your best drop off that are like, this is not innovative. I'm, I know I'm in high demand. Um, I don't have time, right. The best people probably don't have time, right. You're not looking at doctors that are like, well, I've been sitting around for three years and now I'm going to get back in the workforce. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, you probably, you know, that might be a harder hire than someone that's like literally working somewhere else, doing really well, wanting to expand their opportunities to a new opportunity. It's so true. Cause there are times where I'm, you know, maybe I'm figuring out if I want to buy or purchase a certain thing, the harder the process, the more I got to more hoops, I got to jump through the more. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't care this much about this thing. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll move on to somebody else. It's going to make it easier. You've mentioned a couple of times, uh, doctors, stuff like that. You guys have a pretty big gamut of who the, the applicants, right? You're not just talking about, um, you know, a, a phone receptionist at an office. You're talking about from doctors who are looking to move to another practice all the way down. So tell us a little bit about that, about who you serve. Yeah. So we can do, so the, the tactics of our marketing strategy for hiring work for essentially any position. Right. So whether you're hiring for a receptionist or we do a lot of even laborers, right, in construction, or we do a lot in the restaurant industry, uh, we do a lot in healthcare. Okay. So the tactics are the same because basically what we're doing is we're writing an ad trying to sell it to that type of candidate and that applicant. Right. So the ads will be drastically different. What's important to a doctor or a dentist is not the same as what's important to a receptionist. Sure. Right? Um, and so we're using the same, but it's the same tactics. We find what's important to them, what your selling points are on your job, write an ad that's search engine optimized and designed to sell them on the job. Then we filter them out based on, okay, this is what an ideal candidate looks like. Now, an ideal candidate for a doctor obviously looks very different than an ideal candidate for a receptionist or a construction worker or anything like that. But the tactics are the same. Then we get into marketing and obviously uh, we want to go where those type of candidates are at. So for our construction workers or our receptionists, Indeed's a really good place or Facebook, right? Um, for our doctors, we see a lot through referrals and through um, LinkedIn and Le LinkedIn networking. So there's like LinkedIn uh, groups that we'll try and, and post those jobs into to attract the Doctors that may be doctors and dentists, they may not be thinking about moving until they see something that's really attractive. Sure. Them, right. So a lot of your <laughs> higher, your professional positions, they need to be convinced, right? They probably are in high, they're in high demand because there's a lot more employers that are looking for a lot fewer workers. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but they also just need to be convinced because they're likely already working, right? You're not hiring an unemployed person or someone that, that we see. There's a lot of people that go into, oh, unemployment so low. How are we going to find somebody? And then we talk to them. Well, when's the last time you hired an unemployed person? We're like, oh, we don't, we actually filter them out. We don't like an employee. Person. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, then what does unemployment have to do with anything? Right. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, um, we see that all the time uh, that you really want those people that are already working and likely just need to be convinced that your opportunity is better. And that takes marketing strategies. It's not easy to sell people on jobs that they already have, right? To make a change is difficult. Change is the status quo. 
But if you can and you can promote that offering, people are willing to do it. So you're not, uh, what you're saying is that you guys aren't just a, a kind of a set it and forget it, like add, put your ad up here for a new hire or whatever. On the back end, you guys are actually marketing in mm-hmm. different areas for different types of people to come and look at what ads are available or what uh, options are available for them. Yep, that's correct. So is so, that what kind of separates you from like an Indeed or something like that? I don't know too much about how Indeed or Monster work. I mean, I know how they work, but on the back end of their marketing stuff, I'm not sure. Is that kind of a differentiator for you guys? Yeah, that's a huge differentiator. Um, we do use those um, job boards in bigger areas to, to still advertise, but they're using all algorithms and computer-based um, processes, whereas we com- combine software and a professional consultant. So there's the human element and we're going through and thinking about it with, okay, this is now um, the same client has a, a doctor's position that they're posting for and a receptionist position, right? The doctor's position, we're going to, okay, the, here are some marketing tactics that are going to work better. We're going to help our clients market it in the best way um, is, you know, using LinkedIn, using other platforms that more professionals use to find jobs. Whereas the receptionist, you're going to get on the vast majority of your candidates just on Indeed, right? Right, right. So yeah, we'll go through and, and do different marketing tactics. Our goal is to not just set it and forget it. We have we even make changes to the ad. Hey, it's not promote, it's not getting the results we anticipate. Let's change the ad up. Let's see maybe these um, different tactics can actually help uh, attract more candidates. So okay, right now one of the well, I think it happens all the time, but one of the things that definitely is coming back when I hear doctors say, oh, I put an ad out there, and they get a ton of junk applicants. I know you guys filter. I know you guys ask certain questions and stuff. Uh, in my first book, I wrote about how important it is, or sorry, my second book about how important it is to um, to do things like ask specific questions or have them do something. I mean, when I wrote that book back in the day, one of my triggers was uh, I had to send us a paragraph on why you're the person we're looking for. And number two was send us your Skype ID. Right. Mm-hmm. And if they didn't know what a Skype ID was, then and they wouldn't figure it out, then that was a problem. Right. So mm-hmm. the filtering that we talked about, but not everybody does that too. And I hear from doctors all the time. I got, you know, 50 applicants and two of them did what you said to do or did, mm-hmm. you know, did anything. How do you guys filter through that? How do you deal with those junk applicants? Uh, you, again, I'm going to add to this question. There was a time, and I don't know if it's happening so much anymore, but where people just needed to show they had an appointment for a, uh, a job interview in order to get their government check. Is yeah. that still happening? And, and, and how do you deal with all that? Yeah. So actually unemployment has gotten, and again, a lot of people kind of look at that and like, it, it is challenging. We see a lot of people that are obviously on an unemployment applying. They don't have any experience, no reason that they should apply to this job because unemployment's even gotten easier to prove. It's all done electronically and you just have to prove, Hey, I submitted these applications. Right. Oh, interesting. Um, and so that's, that's uh, one thing that we see quite a bit. However, obviously what our tactics look like is your hiring professional. If you use our services, we'll go through and write your ads, market your jobs, the candidates that start coming in, they will also do this screening. And that's a manual screening It's not just Yes, we have some automated screening. We have different ways of, um, you know, hey, how do you answer these questions? If you answer them correct, you know, favorably, we're going to go this route. If you answer them unfavorably, we go this other route, right? So we have that, but then we have an actual human being looking at the applications, the resumes, the contact information, the screening questions, um, and determining, okay, how good of a fit are they? Once they look at those, they'll actually do invite to a workplace personality assessment which will be different depending on the position that they're looking for. So workplace personality assessments are tr- they The goal is to test intangibles. Are they a team player? Um, are they um, honest and open? Are they, do they know how to practice empathy, right? Things that you could never tell from a resume, regardless of how much experience they show. So we do a psychology-based assessment that only takes about 10 or 15 minutes for the candidates to complete. And it's done on their phones, right? Oh. Um, and we'll use that to evaluate as well. Um, and then we even have another step further that I strongly recommend for doctor's office, whether they're doing a receptionist or a doctor or an orthodontist or whatever position they're doing, we have a video, an automated video interview process. Okay. So what this does is we would pre-record questions that can be anything you want to fully customized. And then we invite candidates and the ca- we typically invite candidates that we are interested in, or maybe people that we're on the fence with. 
right? We want more information from them, so let's invite them. They answer the questions. The questions are presented to them in a video format. They watch the video and immediately it gives them like 10 to 30 seconds to think about it. And then they answer it and it starts recording them. So it's really on the spot type stuff. It records their answers and then they nice. can watch the videos whenever they want to. You could be conducting hundreds of interviews all at the same time. And then you can really tell, okay, does this person know what they're talking about? Yeah. They can't really fake that, right? It's on the spot. It's recorded. I'm not going to be able to like pause it and Google things or whatever else I could do. It's going to be me. I have to answer the questions as they're presented to me on my thinking on my feet. So we strongly recommend that process. That's a great and, idea. Yeah. And so we see with doctor's office and it, it kind of depends on the position, but we do see high completion rates on those, on all three, because you're doing it in stages and you're basically saying to the candidate, Hey, you, we did like what you sent to us previously. We want a little bit more information from you. You're passing the next step, right? And each step that they pass, they feel more and more invested that, Hey, I'm getting this job. So when we invest more in them, they'll invest more back in you, right? The way you treat your employee, which starts with the applicant, it, it matters. And so that's why doing it in stages and giving them positive messages of like, yes, we're interested in you. Here's what we want from you um, is really important instead of just like automating it and saying, okay, you did this. Okay. Now you need to do this. Now you need to do this or filling this all out at once. Right. We do see a, a, a interesting trend, especially right now with your highest quality applicants. They often will ignore extra steps and say, look, I already know I'm highest quality. Interesting. Give me an interview. That's where we're at. But the lowest quality ones are also like, hey, I am just doing this for unemployment. I'm not going to do any extra steps, right? Sure. So that's why we actually go in and look at the candidate's applications manually and we mark them high, medium, and low. So instead of the clients having to differentiate between those two, because you'll see one that hasn't done any extra steps and you're like, oh, they're not a good candidate, but they might be your best candidate, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's on both ends. So that's why we'll go through and evaluate them and give you like a high, medium and low. That's rate. a really interesting even tip because I'm sure there are people out there who aren't using your service, obviously, who are just trying to find people that aren't realizing that they might be confused going, well, this person looks like on paper, they have all this stuff, but they didn't complete this or their whatever. Cause mm -hmm. they are thinking I've already got the goods. I don't need to jump through these hoops for you. And mm -hmm. like, just give me the interview. Um, I'm also, I love that you do the video piece about it. I'm a huge fan of never doing a first interview in person, always doing it through zoom, even maybe the second interview. Cause you're going to find out a lot about that person. How are they presenting themselves to you? Are they, you know, doing it while they're driving? Are they, you know, mm -hmm. right. So to be able to have that, I think it's great. I want, I'm going to ask you to do something that's a little crazy, but, um, and then I want to get into like the nitty gritty of how the process actually works, but I want you to predict the future for me. You talked about, uh, you know, you guys are seeing a lot of growth right now as a company. Obviously, it's needed. Obviously, there's a, a process that a lot of people aren't doing that need to be doing. Where do you see the future for employers uh, and for the workforce? Yeah, so this is a very good question to ask because this is where that we have a lot of employers that are like, I'm just going to grit my teeth. I'm going to keep doing things the old way. Mm. And it's going to change back. It's going to change back. My prediction for the future is absolutely not. It's never going to go back as far as like how it was before. We're not going to go backwards. We're going to go forwards. The power, the balance of power might change in the future a little bit, right? Right now, it's very much in the employee's hands. It could change back a little bit more into the employer's hand, but it's never going to change to the point where the employers get to not treat employees well. That's just never, it's never going to go back there. We're not going to digress that way. So we have to start developing a culture, um, a system in our businesses that's going to be attractive, a place where people want to work. One of the most interesting things that I can see from our clients is they'll complain all day about applicants don't do this, applicants are this. Like yep. when I started off, I had to do this. I had to yep. do this. It, there's almost this pride issue of like, well, when I started off as a new doctor, I had to jump through all these hoops. So they, I'm going to make them jump through it. It's like, well, you can do that, but you're not going to get good guy applicants. That's a great it's, point. Yeah. The, it's, it's this idea of like, hey, they have to do what I did because I had to do there to get that here. It's just not the way the world works anymore. Yeah. Right. And so you can either jump on board and adapt and say, hey, I'm going to take advantage of this new scenario. Or you can grit your teeth and say, nope, I'm going to still try to be to treat my employees and get the absolute minimum 
pay them the minimum I can and do that as the minimum. Hey, let's, let's give them the minimum amount of flexibility, the worst work environment that I can offer because I'm trying to make overhead. Yep. You'll find you'll make way more. You'll be way more productive with happy employees. Yeah. That's the, that's the change. And it is going to get before it ever changes back to anything where employers get uh, the upper hand, it's going to go way further in the hand of employees needing a good work environment. It's why I am, I mean, I'm going to repeat myself here, but I seriously, I've been thinking about this a lot lately of how do you pivot in an industry that does require actual people, right? Mm -hmm. Even in industries like the fast food industry, stuff like that, you're seeing how they're able to go, well, maybe we don't actually need people, right? We're building robots to make hamburgers or take orders or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're always going to, and, and there's somebody on this, I know listening to this right now going like, but there's always going to need a human element. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. But how you create that human element is going to be whether you, I think, win or not, whether you are somebody who is looking at the future, like you just did about you know, as I said earlier, be, I can have my financial coordinator. Well, this is something I hear a lot, right? I, somebody needs to transfer. Somebody needs to leave. Their husband gets transferred, whatever. And now it's like you have options. You don't actually have to have that person gone. You just don't need them in your office. And you can set up the systems and processes so they can be not in the office. So I think more and more, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, I think more and more people are going to keep looking for opportunities for employment where they don't have to actually be in the office or in the office all the time, or they can be transient if they wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we're seeing that again, that, that, that ties to the two most important factors in finding a job, work environment. Yeah. And flexibility. Yeah. Right. And wow. so any, it, basically you've got, you've got to be innovative, right? So you're going to have doctors that are going to be in the office and you definitely need personnel there. So those are the hardest positions to hire for right now. Right. And you, we just need to come up with ways to incentivize them the best way. And this is something that's so interesting that so few people do, but the best way to come up with what works is to ask people in that industry, ask your current doctors, ask your current dentist, what did, what would be a game changer for them? What is something that they would enjoy with their job? What is, what makes the difference for them? And then try and implement it as a company culture. Um, an interesting example is here at Applicant Pro. I know I'm an anomaly, but we hire almost, I think we're 85, 90% women. And most of them are working mothers, right? Oh. So we have, and it's fairly different, right? We're in an Eagle Mountain area. So pretty close to like the little Silicon Slopes in Lehigh, right? With a lot of other software companies that hire almost exclusively men, right? So we're a little different that way. We decided, hey, let's look at this different market. And the way that we attracted more women and working mothers is we offer a cleaning bonus where we actually clean the homes of our employees. So smart. Right? It's like a hundred dollars to make a bonus, right? And that's way less than adding even like two dollars an hour to an employee, right? Yes, yes. And yet we do that, and we have. I've got neighbors, I've got family members, I've got people all over that are just like, "Wait, your company does what?" Like yeah, that's crazy. But think of that cost versus the other costs that other people are trying to do. Okay, we've got to raise salaries. This we got to do this. We didn't raise salaries. We just gave them something that was really cool, yep. right? Yep. And new, unique, and something that mattered to them, right? Because it's not that they couldn't go pay someone to clean their house. It's that their employer is paying for them. So now they get this guilty pleasure of like, I don't have to do this. I don't have to feel guilty that someone else is doing it because I, it would just go to waste otherwise, right? So Okay, that just gave me such a great idea of, you know, so many doctors are always looking at ways that they can bonus people a little differently and stuff like that. And as you mentioned at the top of the show, it's not always about the money. I say this all the time to die. Oh, but they always say, just give me the money. I'd rather have the money than the, you know, the cash as opposed to the trip or the cash as opposed to the, the uh, spa day or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's a very specific, Hey, we're going to send a house cleaner to your house to help. You know, you're busy, mm -hmm. you're at work all the time. You got kids. We're going to send somebody to do that for you. What a, what amazing benefit and bonus that is. And you're right. It goes back to the, it's not about the money. Mm -hmm. It's about how this makes me feel the environment again, 
how these people care about me. It's a great, great example of that. Okay, so let's go through kind of quickly how it works. So I'm going to hire Applicant Pro to find me some new team members. And you do utilize things like Indeed and Monster and that stuff, but you're doing it more in a collective. Is that correct? Yes. So yeah, so let's say that you, con it's basically contracting us out to do your hiring, mm -hmm. right? So you would meet with me. I discuss your needs. We talk about what um, your challenges are, what positions you're hiring for, what your selling points are, and what your ideal candidate looks like, right? Um, I work with my team, assign you a specific hiring professional that works mostly in whatever industry you're in, right? So if you're in uh, orthodontist office, we'll get some other people that have worked with ortho orthodontist offices previously. Um, they will work with our ad writing team to write your ad first. We start with content. It's always important to start with the right content. If you don't have the right content, it doesn't matter. If you're not messaging the right message, it doesn't matter how loud you So true. It, right? So we put the right message there. Then we start making it loud by going out to, we typically do four avenues, um, job boards, social media, your, the web, the client's website, and then uh, referrals, which most often are employee referrals, but we can do any type of referral network you want. Um, we do that marketing strategy and help them implement it, help them with their strategy as far as like, hey, this is our ideal candidate. How are we going to attract that ideal candidate? Where are we most likely to get that candidate from? And then we start doing the reviewing process. We will go through and do review resume screening questions and contact information, invite to workplace personality assessments, and even invite to the video interviews. We review those candidates, mark them as high, medium, and low. Our clients have access to all candidates who apply. So it's not like, you know, your typical headhunters would be like, hey, we're going to find you a doctor and we're going to send you over one or two candidates. You hire them, you pay us a little bit every time you pay them, right? <laughs> That's not how our services work. And you own just, you know, a part that one applicant, even though they got, you know, 50 or 60 others. Right. We give you all candidates. You can also make your own decisions on any of those candidates. You own them forever, right? Even if you decide to not use us anymore, we can export their information, give it to you. Um, and we do uh, a charge not based on number of jobs, number of applicants or number of hires. It's a flat rate for marketing services um, that's dependent on your organization size. Wow. That's cool. That is great. Well, um, I am so glad because I, 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 we've talked about this for a while getting you on the show because I just think so many people need to, first of all, I love the outsourcing idea. Too many owners are doing this, or even if they have a, somebody in their office is doing it, it's just taking up resources that doesn't need to be taking up the resources, especially when they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to market this. They don't know how to write good copy. And so to have a team that they can use like you guys to get this done is I think so important as well as we're in a time where the more we can uh, put a spotlight on our business by using processes like yours, the better and finding the right and the good applicants. As you know, you've seen probably hundreds of nightmare stories where I just look at and go, man, if you're hiring just to get a warm body right now, which a lot of people are, they're just desperate. So they'll hire a warm body. Uh, there is something that we talked about in the pre-show that I wanted to talk about around, right? I just saw a report yesterday saying that some states like Idaho and Utah and some other surrounding states, Nevada, I think it was, are back to pre-pandemic levels of employment. I kind of find that interesting to, to hear because I'm I'm not hearing a lot of relief from my doctors. So what if, what's your insight? Yeah, so I think that that's still an overall estimate because some industries went way up mm. and some industries went way down. So overall, they're so on the uh, average, they're saying it's back to what it was, but yeah. Not, yeah. Because a lot of the benefits ran out. A lot of people like realized, okay, we got to get jobs again. Right. So a lot of people did. Right. And, but they didn't go back to their same job. Right. That's the biggest difference is a lot of people are like, Hey, I want this other thing. I want something different. It, when you get laid off because of a pandem pandemic, I mean, my wife was laid off from it and she didn't go back to her same job mm. she went to a new job um and said that this is a way better opportunity for me and so there's lots of people that decided that exact same way when you get laid off you evaluate things and if you're on a place of evaluation that means that often you don't go back to where you were right you yeah. may but a lot of people decided to say hey i want something different and so though especially the industries hardest hit with which are all your in-person industries right 
anything that's in person that required a face-to-face -face interaction. They were the hardest hit. And so therefore they lost the most amount of employees and they went somewhere else, right? They got different jobs. Which makes even more for the argument that you've got to really stand out. You've got to have a way to stand out and uh, differentiate yourself, not be a commodity, you know, mm -hmm. and decommoditize what you do because it is, it's, it's crucial right now. And you need to have that big uh, spotlight on you. So people say, okay, I want to try that. Even if it's not the same interest they came from to attract the right people. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to put out a, a good place to work and you got to be a good place to work. You, you got to sell people on it. If you're like, no, I just, I'm going to grind my workers to death. And like, I'm advertising it that way. It's like, well, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not going to work die. out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sweet. Well, man, you're just a, a ton of knowledge. I really appreciate you you sharing that with us. And uh, we're going to go over with the part of our show where we go through six questions that we ask everybody at the end of the show, kind of rapid fire, just the top of your head responses of what you're thinking with your um, with your experience that you have. So are you ready to play? Absolutely. Awesome. When in your experience, what is the most expensive thing that business owners are missing in their practice or in their business? My experience, the most expensive thing would be to understand that the market has changed and you need to adapt with the market, right? So they're so trying true. to get their same process that they got in 20, 30 years ago, especially small business owners, and they just are shooting themselves in the foot. They're going to get crap applicants. So. Yeah, that's so true. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a huge book reader. I love, I read about a book a week. Uh, what's the book that you believe every business owner should read? Um, Malcolm Gladwell's David and Goliath. You need to know you're, you're fighting most of these, small, especially small businesses are fighting it like as if Goliath versus Goliath and you're not Goliath. You got to use your advantages, use your distance, use your sling, use your different stuff to your advantages. Don't just go, okay, I'm going to advertise it the same way and put my pay as, you know, half the amount and hope that I get twice the applicants. It's like, that's not, it doesn't work that way. I so. think that's, that's a great book. That's a great suggestion. And you're so right. I talk about often using, I use the big companies as my market research because they've already done it. Right. So mm -hmm. when I got doctors out there who are complaining about small direct club or one of these at home services, I go, dude, no, like they're, you're, they're, putting millions of dollars in market research, what they're doing is what you need to start looking at. How can you do that? And how can you be like them? Um, I've talked about on the show before too. I, I know in an in-depth way, because I actually go through the process of these other companies. So then I can go, well, I might not be able to send a kit to every single person, but the way they follow up is killer. I'm going to, I got my follow-up game. Right. And so you gain that knowledge. So I totally agree. Great book. I don't think anybody's recommended that on this, this show. And it's a very, very good point. Um, speaking of books and my book, The Practice Rx, um, I focus a lot on the team culture and team performance as foundation for business growth. We've talked about culture on this show a little bit. As you're talking to these doctors, what are these, uh, I should say, uh, business owners, mm -hmm. what do you see as the biggest challenge that business owners are facing when it comes to their teams and office culture? Yeah, they are the biggest thing that they're seeing is just essentially what they look at as flakiness, right? Unreliable workers, regardless of what they're doing, right? It could be an unreliable receptionist. She doesn't come in. He doesn't come in on these days. They don't, you know, they give me excuses of all this stuff. They're, they're just not feeling like, and that starts even at the point of interviews, right? Mm. Oh, they don't show up for an interview. They don't have this which is very interesting because with how many calls I've had with business owners and how many people they don't, how many times they don't show up, it's like, oh, I give them a break, right? Oh, that's interesting. And they're still a good person and they still have this stuff. This just came up, right? So it is an evaluation of like, hey, how busy are they? Or like, is this someone that's really sincere about, hey, this happened? Do it. they need the human element to understand that their life is difficult? And can I give them that flexibility? Or am I going to be like, look, it's not, they're not performing. Right. So if we're looking, business owners have a hard time looking at people as people because they're looking at like overhead co costs and expenses. Right. Mm. And so if we can help them solve the problem of what's making them fl flaky, if you're willing to do that, sometimes you all of a sudden earn this your lifetime customer, which is your employee. Yeah. That now becomes this huge advocate for you. But too many em employer or 
yeah, employers in general, but business owners, especially small businesses are like, I don't have time. I can't invest in it. I want someone that can do this. I want another me that can do this over here and do the work, but I can't train them. It's like, you got to pick a problem and you got to solve one of them, right? That's <laughs> so. very, very smart because uh, I definitely see that with people of in all different era, parts of their business of it should be this way, even though I'm not going to do it this way. Like you said, like I might miss the meeting or I might not show up or show up late or not show up prepared, but I expect everybody else to. I do that. I have a sales training that I talk about doctors who complain about people who come in and then want to go and, you know, talk to their spouse or give me some time or go mm -hmm. shop around. And then I'll say, well, when you're choosing a consultant or you're choosing somebody to work with, how do you act? It's like you, it, oh, well, yeah, I need more time. Oh, I need, well, why does it surprise you that other people are doing the same thing you're doing? You can't, you can't expect them to do something that you're doing as well or not do something you're doing. Totally true. Uh, this is the most important question we have on the show is how can people reach out to you and get a hold of you and find out more about your services? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the easiest thing to remember is applicantpro.com. You can schedule a consultation there. Um, you can reach out to me either by email or I do have a calendar link, but email is Caleb, C-A-L-E-B at applicantpro.com. Um, you can actually even, I've had people just text me, right? I answer on my cell phone. Nice. So um, I, again, it's interesting to see when I've been moving over to business owners. I used to work a lot with like HR directors and they were very focused in on like compliance and standards and things like that. So I'd never get a text for them. Business owners are like, they won't answer my emails. They'll send me a text all the time, right? Yeah. So you can text me direct 801-709-4064. So awesome. And when you do, and full disclosure, I actually have a, uh, a connection with this company. That's why I've been wanting to have them on so long, where I have a, a, a affiliate partnership. So mention my name. They're going to take care of you and or mention you saw this on the show because I, I believe in them. I think what they're doing, there's nobody else out there that I know of that's doing it like this. And I think it's really worth your while doing it. So that's awesome. Thanks for giving that information. Applicantpro.com, Caleb at applicantpro.com. Uh, what's the best advice that you've ever received in life or business? I would say the best advice that I've received is not to give up. Um, this is something, so I'm actually a tennis coach oh. and um, I play tennis a lot of my life. And one of the things that they, they always talk about in tennis is tennis isn't a time game. It's you can be all the way, way down and come all the way from back, be like completely out and still win the match. Right. Mm. At the end of the time. And so, um, if you understand that and don't give up, even when it looks like you have no way out, there's always a way out, right. You don't lose the match until that last point. Um, and they can have that all day long, but you can come back and still win the whole match. So That's a great point. Don't give up. Yeah. Last question for you is uh, what's the, what's the best resource or tool that you think every business owner should be using to grow their practice? Yeah. So I think the best resource, um, has to do with understanding marketing tactics, right? I don't know. You can go lots of different places, but if you can understand your marketing tactics and apply them in all different aspects of even the way you treat employees, the way you hire, the way you market for your business, um, you can understand the importance of content and selling people on whatever you're trying to do, right? So there are tons of, of third-party marketing agencies out there you can hire out or whatever you want to do with that, but understanding your basic marketing principles and applying them to well beyond just marketing is really important. So. I love it. So agree. So agree. I wish more and more people would focus on the marketing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, Caleb, you've given us a lot to think about. Great conversation. Really appreciate you and appreciate what you are, are doing out there in the world. Thanks for being a part of our show today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, everybody, again, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget, as always, to share it with your friends and colleagues. We've been getting some great feedback from listeners. I think this episode is like 128 or something like that. But thank you so much for sharing this with your friends and colleagues. Also remember that we're always here to help you be more proactive, productive, and profitable in all areas of your life and business. We'll see you on the next episode, everybody. Thanks so much again for listening to the ProPreneur Podcast. We really appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you do so. Also, if you feel like you might be a good fit for our podcast as a guest or know somebody who you think would be, go ahead and email us at dino at dinowatt.com. Again, thanks for support. We'll see you on the next episode.